was a bunch of like German protesters outside of your father's talk, just like, Jordan Peterson ist ein Faschist. You're German. You should surely know what a fascist is. Like, you would know it intimately. <laughs> Welcome to the Michaela Peterson podcast, Luke Cook. Thank you so much for having me, Michaela. That was beautiful. <laughs> I really appreciate that. I mean, no, of course. It's, a, it's, a, it's an incredible theme song and it gets stuck in my head all the time. So I just had to give it to you. But the funniest video I've seen so far today was a bunch of like German protesters outside of your father's talk, just like, Jordan Peterson ist ein Faschist. You're German. You should surely know what a fascist is. Like you would know it intimately. You know, you've got this wrong, this one. I know, pretty weird, huh? It's so weird. You know, how can you honestly call yourself an anti-fascist and try and de-platform people? Like try and not let people speak. How is that an, where's the intellectual honesty in that? There isn't any. Yeah. People are very and confused. I like how you, and your mom, your little mom posting a picture of the... <laughs> I know of the Mom. Pic the picket line. I'm just imagining her like, and she just didn't seem to care. She was like, "Look at these no. people." <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's just like five foot walking around. Here's the Antifa <laughs> outside my husband's show. <laughs> the Antifa. She would call it the Antifa, and then she posts it on the Facebook. Yeah, and the Instagram. She has a podcast now. Isn't that fun? I'm yet to listen to it, but I I believe that did she do one with your dad where she was talking with him? Yeah. About their relationship, their marriage and stuff like that. That sounds fascinating. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty cute. Okay, before we get into all this, can you give a brief background about who you are and what it is you do? Sure. Yeah, um, my name is Luke Cook. I'm an actor. Um, you may know me from Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Dynasty, Dollface. And I've been acting since I was a teenager. And then in the last few years, I've kind of found myself with this following on Instagram and TikTok, uh, where I just make really silly content. And, and not until recently did I start a podcast uh, where I talk about health and wellness, uh, but in a light way. And also not just health and wellness. I just I, I just had an OnlyFans guy on. I've got an escort coming next week. So I kind of keep it sexy and interesting and not just talking about how good omega-3s are for you all the time. That gets bland. It does get bland. I kind of started my podcast in the health niche too. Mostly because that's what I was interested in learning about. So I was like, oh, I can just sneak all these experts in, have conversations. Hey, it's for my podcast. Can I just pick your brain for an hour? Sure. Like, ha, what a scam. Yeah, exactly. But you see, like it only takes one podcast for somebody to say how good meat is that you're just and then you're finished. I mean, as far as your diet is concerned, it's like, is salt good? Good. Is meat good? Good. I think we're done. Yeah. I had to move away from it. There's only so much you can say. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, okay. now, you, now you're in the space of, excuse me, but you're in the space of doing like having arguments or uh, getting people who disagree with each other on your podcast, which I just think is, it's amazing that people can paint you as anything, like that people can paint you as this wild, crazy conservative when you have people of multiple viewpoints on your podcast. I know, it's ridiculous. The real conservative, um, my husband, I was just, I was wearing a, Edward Scissorhands, I'm still kind of pissed off. I, I entered this podcast like angry because I couldn't figure out how to turn a light on. And then I was wearing this Edward Scissorhands shirt and it was really cool. It's my favorite shirt. And he's like, that shirt looks bad. I was like, it doesn't look bad. It's really cool. And he's like, it's ratty and you should wear something cuter. I was like, that's what a conservative person is like. Nick's in my <laughs> Edward Scissorhands shirt. Anyway, I did change. It actually did look bad, it turned out on camera, but that's not the point. Yeah, well, it turns out he's right, too. So that's annoying. <laughs> so how did you get started? I want to get into your acting a little bit uh, and what that's mm. like. I've always been interested in in acting. I don't think I could do it, though. You know, it's kind of like when you talk to a singing teacher, they'll say that anyone can sing. Uh, Is that and I'm, true? Man, I, think, I, I think you could look the fact that you can speak publicly. That's a huge uh you know, uh, step to get over in order to be an actor in the first place. People say that there's two things that freak everyone out. It's bugs and public speaking. Well, you're already good at public speaking. You can already do it. You're not afraid to do it. I say like add a, now add learning lines to it. And then that's the, the next phase and then add character to it and thinking about what is my part in this story. A lot of people get into acting thinking that it's all going to be a big show about them. And some people that, that, that you, you probably wouldn't like that. But the, actually the idea of acting is that I play a brick in the wall of a whole story. 
So you don't have to get up and entertain or be amazing. You just have to play your part. Uh, so, you know, so, so often we see parts in TV, which are, it's just a guy delivering pizza and there's nothing about the scene. All he has to do is deliver the pizza. Mm-hmm. If you got, if you get a guy who's an entertainer on there, he'll want to do too much. And it's like, no, just deliver the pizza. That's your job. And you know, that's the job of most actors just deliver the pizza, just be the brick in the wall. You don't have to do much more than that. So I think that you are maybe overstating or you have overthought what it means to be an actor. It's actually quite simple. It's just playing your part in a story. So you're about to have another baby. Yes, yes. We're about to have a second boy in November. Uh, He'll be born about the same time as my other son, who's turning two at the same time. Very nervous um, and excited at the same time. What are you nervous about? Just the the challenge of uh, of a new thing that you've got to keep alive. Um, you just don't know what um, you just don't know with with my wife. You can't tell how she's going to be able to handle it if she's going to have a battle. The first baby that we had, she had trouble feeding him mastitis, and she thought she was going to die. Oh, it was a real struggle. My God, she had about five different pros come in to try and teach her how to do it, and it was just a battle, and it was just a, a, a stressful time. So. And then, and then there's the change of, then there's that initial period. And then there's the change of all the time, you know, the, of how inconvenient having a second one might be. There's really going to have to be all, yeah. like one person is going to have to man one of the children and another person is going to man the other one. And what that's going to mean for my personal time of which, you know, I value that time. I really like love to go and be by myself, make stupid content, do what I need to do. Uh, now there's a second priority and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's all a um, it was it's all a negotiation. I find, and I and I'm I'm nervous about continuing to negotiate. I think that's probably wise. Yeah. I, I, how do you do you did you struggle with negotiating like time? You you're a person who is like working for yourself and also like trying yeah. to make content and and stuff like this. Did you struggle to negotiate that time alone to be with your kid and and to go and work too? <sighs> I wasn't alone for a, the first year. Yeah, but you had to negotiate with him, right, in order to be able to go and do your thing. Oh, um, honestly, I, w- I really wasn't alone for about a year. I just had Scarlett kind of strapped to me. And I had a lot of ah. chairs that she could sit in. She was just kind of attached to me, really, okay. uh, which was I, I don't think was great for me. I think that there are some women that are really built to do childcare as their primary thing. Like my sister-in-law, She's really good at it. And mm. I like I was a nanny for a number of years um, as a teenager in, in my young 20s. And I really enjoyed it. But like, I don't think I'm agreeable enough to have a, like a baby strapped to me constantly. I go a little bit nuts with like, there's a bunch of things I want to do. How do I do them? Like, it, it's like a frustrating position to be in. And I'm sure lots of people when they first have a baby get fr- I wasn't frustrated with Scarlett. It's just frustrating to have something that I mean, I don't know if that's narcissistic or what, but that isn't you to like take care of. It wasn't her either exactly that was frustrating. It was, I missed the productivity, honestly. It's as simple as that, but it was worth yeah. it. Like you, I, I know now that when I have another kid and I'm planning on having more kids, I need to wrap my ra- my mind around really taking at least six months off. Just being like, okay, yeah. the baby's here. That's six months. Don't worry about work. I had like work guilt and things hanging over me. It was like, don't worry mm-hmm. about it. You have like a new life. Focus on that. That'll pass. And then you can have some more productive time. I mean, I navigated it. Scarlet's great. I'm alive. So everything right. worked out. It is deeply inconvenient. Like we, and that's how <laughs> young people mostly think about kids. It is deeply yeah, inconvenient. Yeah. You just, you can't imagine how much you're going to love this little thing though, yeah. like beyond exactly. any love for any adult that you've ever met in your life, you will have this love for this thing. So yes, inconvenient, but also deep love. But the other thing I'll say is the, the difficulty of the negotiation, especially with between partners on taking care of kids is, well, you assume that like, so for instance, when Kara had our first child, I was like, okay, great. Well, it looks like you're going to take care of him and I'm going to go and work and you're going to rest and, you know, recuperate and take care of him. And that's, that's going to be your thing. But it turns out, no, it's actually like, no, we're 50, 50 splitting and you're going to go and work. <laughs> and so, and that's, and that's difficult. So, and I, it, it's really important to like, kind of be open about, you know, are you going to be, are you going, are you going to really want to be a mom and be a mom like a lot, or are you wanting to split this? Of which point a guy has to go, it'd be great to get some help 
maybe a family yeah, member. Yeah, 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 yeah. So being near family is incredible. So, if, you know, my mother-in-law, for instance, she's in, she's an amazing person and, and very, very helpful. My mom describes my mother-in-law as having a servant's heart, which she very much does. So like one night she just gave all of us foot um, spas and she's just that, that type of person. Sweet. She's brought out the foot spa and, you know, she's, and she's a cleaner by trade. Um, and to have her around was just a godsend. It is beyond what you could like, you know, we're beyond thankful to have somebody like that. So if you can have family nearby, highly guaranteed. Yeah. Highly think, recommended. Sorry. Yeah. 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 I, I agree. I think that's what my parents were on a tour when I had Scarlet for, you know, that was like when things got really quick, crazy and 2017 2018 and my in-laws didn't like me so that was an issue <laughs> so so it, it was tough it was tough but i i do agree that the overwhelming love makes it worth it it's tricky society is also not optimized for that at all like i know i've done some research on how tribes used to operate and you'd have mm -hmm women that had, you'd have different roles in tribes, right? So you'd have the women that were really good at taking care of kids, taking care of kids. And then you'd have women off going to get food. And then you'd have people hunting, you would have people building things, but it wasn't like, like now families are so isolated that it's like, well, the woman in that family or the man or however it's split up, they'll be the ones staying at home. And if you have two hyper productive mm. people, then you're kind of like missing a person. But, uh, Regardless, I would say children are still worth it. You just have to figure out how to navigate that, right? Like figure out how to get help, I think is important, especially if you can afford help, figure out how to get some people there. Ideally, I mean, if you have family around. Yeah, family, you just don't have to pay for. That's a good thing about family. But the other thing about the tribes is, it's, which is amazing to think about, is they shared breastfeeding duties. So there would be like six women doing the breastfeeding who could do it at any one time can you imagine that makes the gut way microbiome? more sense yeah oh that's but can you imagine that's cool yeah like it would, yeah. they would have been like strong as anything oh, okay i didn't i didn't think about that yeah for a, from a health perspective an immune system perspective but also when you first have a kid like they're attached to you they're nursing like every two hours it's crazy and then you don't sleep yep. it's like good luck like not especially if you're not inclined to use formula and i was so paranoid about formula um, yes. I was like, no, nah, not doing any formula. Um, and it was like every two hours, which is not conducive to staying sane. Yeah. I mean, I figured out that Kara, who was going through hell, wasn't willing to uh, part with the hell. I was like, let yeah. me, let's do a, yeah, let's do yeah, a bit yeah. of formula. She's like, no, I no, And I'm like, you're in hell, uh, you're in hell. And she just yeah. doesn't want to leave. <laughs> and so yeah. I found out that I discovered that about my partner during that time was like, oh my gosh, like you actually like if I offer you a way out of hell, you don't necessarily take it. I don't know if it's martyrdom or if it's like, I don't know what it is, but eventually I think I was like, like that. Uh, right. Yeah. When she was like first born, I was like, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. I wasn't sleeping in things. And I was like, no, she's not leaving me. It was like, you're going crazy. It's like, I know I can't, mm -hmm. I can't live like this, but like, we'll just see what happens, I guess. <laughs> This episode is sponsored by NordVPN. Nord's virtual private network hides your data from authoritarian governments or even non-authoritarian governments and protects your data from any unwanted third-party overreach. Are there really non-authoritarian governments though? Or is the entire thing a scam? I used to think Canada had a good stable government. Now I do not. That's all I'll say here for now. NordVPN encrypts data by using an encrypted tunnel that conceals your activity online without risking the integrity of your personal information or your privacy. VPNs like the one Nord offers are particularly beneficial if you're in a situation where your government completely limits or shuts down access to the internet, which can happen with absolutely insane governments. Iran, currently, China, it's crazy. NordVPN keeps your location private and your internet access secure so that people can't discover where you live or where you're working from, wherever you are. Protect yourself and the free flow of information by grabbing your NordVPN deal today over at nordvpn.com TMPP or use the promo code TMPP for a whopping 61% off their premium plan and their free anti-malware feature all with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. Yeah, and there is a way in which you can mimic or at least try to mimic breast milk. Nothing really does. 
But if you are, if you're out there and you're listening to this and you're like, oh, how do I do it? There is a way, you know, you get it the, the best, you know, uh, formula that you can afford. There's a really com- good company called Serenity Kids. They do an A2 oh, I cow love milk them. formula. Yeah. They're amazing. And you mix it with uh, cod liver oil. So vitamin D and DHA and then a, a kid's probiotic um, with the back dough, oh. all that one. Um, and so it's coming close to breast milk, but still not, it's nothing's going to be as good, but there is a way in which you can, you know, if you're going through hell, you know, maybe go, okay, 50, 50, I'll do 50%. The formula does the other 50, give yourself a break. Yeah. Stay sane. Now it's better yeah, for your sane. relationship too. Cause it's, it's yeah, hard. Right? It can be tough at the beginning. Yeah. Especially if you're both kind of going crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's interesting. The serenity kids. I like serenity kids. Like their, their food, that is good kid food. That's good adult food. Like that's just good food. Serenity kids. And you said you mix cod liver oil in and will babies drink that? They do babies. Like, you know, as far as they're concerned, they don't know what horrendous fish tastes like they'll do it. (laughs) They'll do, you know, they'll do, they'll do liver. Like, you know, one of Chaplin's first foods was liver and we were watching him like hold this long slip. Like it was um, this long string of liver because they can't choke on it because it's too big. So he's just kind of gnawing on it. And we're like that. I we would we, I would never eat liver straight like that. But you can't you can't yuck their yum. If they like it, it's just like good. Mm-hmm. It's so nutritious and great for them. But yeah, cod liver oil is one of those things. Super high in DHA and vitamin D. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's helpful information. Um, I started following you a long time ago, and your Instagram is very entertaining, and your TikTok is quite entertaining too. So I would recommend that. It's good. It's good Instagram content rather than just following political people all the time. It's yes. Like, yes. I had, I had a woman the other day. She didn't follow me, but she was like, I, I posted this mockery of Adam Levine. Um, and, and she was like, uh, Luke Cook, who are you going to vote for in the midterms and why? And I was like, well, firstly, I'm not an American. Uh, and secondly, like not everything has to be about that. She's like, you're posting trash gossip. Let's talk about something with substance. And I'm like, you know, a lot of people don't, um, don't see politics as straight substance. There's a lot of trash in politics and a lot of people are tired of it. And I think they'd rather talk about gossip and like, you know, nothing things than talk about politics who, you know, let's not assume that politics is so interest is so interesting to people or so vital or so substantial. I think people are fed up with it. It's also full of gossip as well. It's kind of the same totally. thing. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and these people who are like po- politicians and they're as immoral as anything and we're following along and like they have something of substance to give and they're all stringing us along too. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit like ranty, but I'm, I'm not, I don't think that, I don't think that talking about politics is necessarily like, you know, nutritious conversation. Or conversation to stay sane. That's why I'm trying to keep it light on Instagram. That was the point of that rant. I, I, I want to keep things light and fun so that, you know, you have a break from all of the news. I think that's good. Maybe if everyone just took a break, people would be saner. Just quit following anyone who discusses anything political. <laughs> I went through Instagram the well, other day and unfollowed yeah. a bunch of people. And I was like, it's too, str- it's not, I don't get stressed really from it, but like, it's not, I get worked up for sure. I'm like they did what this stupidity is going on, which is like, you should be aware, but I don't know how much of that actually just plays into increasing the amount of stupidity that's around. Yes. I'm not sure actually that how much awareness actually helps anything. Like my awareness of the situation in um, South Korea, North Korea, I'm not sure that I could actually do anything about that. I, I think that if I can be good to my neighbors, my family and my friends, strangers on the street, if I can be good and loving to them, then surely that does more good for the general populace than me worrying about the Ukraine, you know, and me being aware of the, I, I don't know what my awareness can possibly do. It, it, it might tell me who to vote for. Uh, like really, like that's really like the height of awareness. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know if awareness actually does, does that much. I think that you can do much more within your inner circle right now than you can do about being aware of what's going on on the other side of the world. I like that. I think I probably have a mixed opinion on that. I feel like some people being aware about things can help, but for the majority of people, maybe being less aware and focusing on people nearby and being a good person mm. is what helps. Yeah. Rather than trying That's, to some fix something far it. away. Yeah. 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 My dad seems to be able to care about a lot of different situations and connect them. Right. And well, I guess he can kind of understand them all too. You know, for me, it's just a big mess. I don't know what NATO is and I don't know what's going on in Russia and Ukraine. I really don't understand it. Whereas he, it might understand the history of everything like that, which you kind of make it an intellectual pursuit, which would be enjoyable. 
but not, not, <laughs> it's just not for me. No, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So ooh, let's get into acting a little bit. You said you've been acting yeah. since you were a kid. When did, did you want to do that? Were you forced into it? How old were you when it started? Oh no, I wasn't a child star by any means. I was, I just liked at going and doing the plays in school. Um, and I just found that I was happiest there. There was no, there, I, I do often think about the expectations of my peers about them going, Oh, Luke Cook's going to do the play. He'll do the play. Um, and if I met, tried to meet those expectations or if it's really what I wanted, but I would just, I did find that I just had this entertainment bone. I don't really, if I was to re, if I was to say what I do, I would say I'm more of an entertainer than an actor because I just like trying yeah. to try to make people laugh rather than like pure actors like Colin Firth, for instance, like that guy doesn't have Instagram. He's not interested in it at all. He doesn't, do, he doesn't do, you know, um, mm campaigns to make people love him he just wants to show up set up on set and act whereas i want a little bit more than that i'd like to like be able to make you laugh every second day if i can why why do you care about that uh, it, it's not that i care it's just that if i see that um for a lot of people i you wouldn't believe the amount of messages i get of people who write to me and say i was having the worst day and i just come to your page and you did this video and it just I did a 180 on where I was and you just go, okay, well that that's worth something. That's a, like, if I can turn your day around with a laugh, that's actually like worth something to people. I mean, and then this is, and also Michaela, this is me convincing myself that what I do is worthwhile too. <laughs> like I, I have to make sure that like, I want to keep doing it and, you know, and say that and, and not think of myself as this idiot clown all the time. Like there's, there's, I do, but I do honestly think that some good comes of, my silliness. Um, so yeah, that's why I, I keep going at the same time. I do need breaks. Like I need a break probably around now I've been going too hard for too long and the brain needs to stop thinking of the world as content and start thinking of the world as the world. Hmm. I like that. Okay. So do you think adding in your podcast to all the social media is just, it's a lot of content right now? a lot of content and it's all just yeah it's i like the podcast because it gives people another another look inside of who i am rather than yeah. just the silliness or just the big acting roles it also gives them like get an access to me and and and, and what i find interesting but it is it is crazy like I, I i am a sensitive human being so if i put information out into the world from somebody who knows what they're talking about people get angry at that. Yesterday I did a video about 5G and I had a doctor on there talking about the effects of EMFs and 5G and 5G plus. Oh no. Which is, you know, an I have you know, I've she so avoided that. Well, Don't, yeah, okay, that, so she talked about look. how it's an ex she talked about how it's an experiment on an experiment. Anyway, I posted it and she like what it does to the cells, it makes like calcium leak from the cell essentially uh, of your, in your body. And people were just so angry and, and people were like, this is misinformation. You have a huge platform. You should get somebody on oh. here who disagrees with it, with peer reviewed studies, blah, 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 talk, yeah. calling me irresponsible, saying that she wasn't a real doctor. Um, and I was like, okay, well, like, um, <laughs> I really, ha I, I really hate this because it's not a hill I want to die on because it's not that I, it's not that I ab agree or disagree with her. It's just that I'm putting information out into the world. And people are saying, you can't put that information out in the world. <laughs> and I, I'm just too sensitive for it. So I'm trying to, I love being controversial, but I don't, I don't like it in that way. I don't like when people are yelling at me. I, I, I can't quite take that. I think you get used to it. I like, I really do you think you get used to it. Yeah, you, you get used to it. It's much more stressful at the beginning. And then later it's like, eh, they'll, they'll just unfollow you and go follow somebody else. Yeah. And I, and I do on. wonder, I have to. <laughs> I, yeah, I have to one and ask myself the question, am I being a pussy <laughs> or, or am I, am I sensitive? And that's a thing to say that you go, okay, well, I don't want to feel this way. Or am I supposed to go into the unknown a little bit, go like, okay, you don't like it and you can't take, you know, people asking questions and talking about certain issues, then F ya, I'm going to keep going though. So I, I'm, I, I fight with that idea in my brain. I think it's that, I think then you get less sensitive to it too. Like, I, I really do think it's that because also people, if someone's following you and they're like, oh, I don't like this one person you talk to and they can't understand that you're a human being who's inviting other human beings onto a podcast that, and you guys both have flaws and it's just information. If that person can't understand that, then who cares what that person thinks? 
you're right, but you did just call me a pussy. At the beginning of the journey, though, maybe. <laughs> it's stressful. It's stressful when people disagree with yeah. you, especially if you're talking about things like 5G. And those are just people who really like their their cell phones and their AirPods and things. This is why I've avoided yeah. this. People are like, you're frying your brain. And I'm like, you know what? Probably. I know. I know. Look, I and mean, here's the thing that I don't necessarily think that it's as bad as certain people might, might say it is or as fine as people say it is. All I know is that I don't, I wouldn't put my son's cot next to the Wi-Fi router. Would you put your baby's cot next to the Wi-Fi router? And no one is going to say yes to that. And you go, why? And you go, well, just because you don't know. Well, it's, well, then, well, then we should be able to talk about it. Would you put your son's cot next to the microwave? Absolutely. <laughs> hell no. Oh, okay. Well then let's take it a step down. Let's go to Wi-Fi. Let's go to 5G. Let's ask those questions. I just think like, it's like, but I, you know, but we should be able to talk about it. You know, it's like the, it's like the big V we weren't allowed to talk about that. A lot of women were saying that it helped like they, they got their periods yep. late after the vaccine. They were talked down to, they were scolded. They were gaslighted. I hate using that word because it's so popular now, but it's true. They were gaslighted. And then you end up finding out that they were correct, that they weren't lying at all. And that a huge percentage of the population, the female population had late periods because of the vaccine. So it's like the question that you couldn't ask only 10 months ago is now factual. Yeah. That's why you also can't cower, not saying you're cowering either, but that's why you also can't take the masses seriously too. If you have an inkling about something, like you can be wrong a lot of the time, but you might be talking about something that's true. So if you're like, well, maybe I'll shy away from that. And then 10 months later, it's like, oh no, that was spot on. And I knew it. I, I'd say like people who actually follow you too and who are sane are forgiving. If you run across someone who's like not forgiving, then just ignore them. I appreciate that. That's good advice. Plus it gets easier the more it happens. Like when, when it, and it really does, the like controversy my dad went through every time when he first like became more well-known, every time there was a negative article, you know, like New York Times, there was one that was pretty, and I think they made more of an impact too before. I think they come out now and people are like, eh, no one trusts mainstream media anyway. But in 2018, it was a bit of a different story. And every time it was like the end of the world. It was so stressful. It's the end of the world. It was what are friends going to think? How is this going to impact my job? It was like crazy. And it'd be this like week and a half of just utter panic. And then things would just continue and things would get better. It'd be like it, it wasn't even negative. It looked negative, but it turned out to be positive later. And so now it's just like, it's kind of a joke. I don't know if that's how mainstream media is or if you just, you really just get used to it. Yeah, I'd love to know about like how, how we can remain resilient to like stay on our message despite that the ample hate that can come in as a result of what you do. You know, even having a discussion with somebody on a podcast or telling young men that they're worth, worthy of existence, you know, <laughs> spreading that message. And it cops you a, a barrage of hate. And then you're just like, oh, you know, maybe I'm on the right path then, actually. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that, and also you have to look at how much support you're getting. Because, you know, you focus on the hate. It's way easier to focus on the hate. You, you have to just listen to the voice in your head, I think, at some point. Like, well, really think about it. Are you doing anything wrong? And if there's nothing in you that's like, well, did you lie about something? Like, are you you know, living a lie, like that conversation where you're just curious about it. You're just talking to someone about it. That, there's nothing wrong with that. So then you can ignore everybody else. If you're right, fuck them. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I, like I don't that. know how, how well that attitude works in Hollywood though. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about Hollywood anyway. I, I really can't continue to try and figure out in my head what Hollywood is, what Hollywood wants, what they don't want. I, 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 I can't because, um, if I keep thinking about it, I'll just go insane. I have to just be myself. I, 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 I can't find any other way around it. I've been trying and thinking about, well, what do they want? What do they want? Do they want this? And it's like, if you want to do a dance in your underpants, Luke, to Taylor Dane, go, go for it. Fuck them. <laughs> they'll figure it out. Is, is it you? Is it your truth? Is this really what you want to do? Then go for it. F them. They'll figure it out. If they don't yeah. want you, fine. Are you going to be not yourself and pretend to be this Henry Cavill serious English man for the rest of your life? Where I'm like, you know, I don't even have sex. You know, it's like, uh, like I, I don't want to be a, I don't, I, I just, I'm not bland. I'm just not. So I'm refused to pretend to be bland in order to fit in with, you know, the Hollywood leading men who are just like, 
you know, like, have you ever done anal? Like, have they ever done anal? Have they ever tried something new? Have they ever done a bump of Coke? Like, wh- what do we, what do we know about these people? Like who are, we look up to. This like, is why they avoid, so this is why they avoid Instagram. Henry Cavill, <laughs> yeah. bland. That's he's, funny. He's so, but he's, he's so handsome though. I mean, what are you going to do? He's so handsome. Doesn't matter. He He's very handsome. I, when I was like 23, I remember for some reason, I don't even know why I got on this. I was on a lot of Adderall and <laughs> that is, that's a dangerous thing to do. And I needed to be on it for chronic fatigue in order to stay awake. But like, that doesn't got mean it. that I didn't have Adderall side effects. And I got it into my head. I was living with my, one of my dad's grad students and we just decided to find the most attractive people on the internet just to see, you know, and Hen- I don't know. It was like, I think I got into, I was like, do, is what women find attractive the same thing as what men find attractive? So I was like, this is mm. what I think the most attractive men it looks like. What do you think the most attractive men looks like? And this is like a psychology PhD student. So we were having this conversation for a while. I think it was mostly Adderall induced. Anyway, long story short, Henry Cavill, that's what I determined was like the most attractive man out there when I was Incredibly anyway. attractive. And, as, and it, it, he's so attractive, it necessitates, like he doesn't even have to have a, a personality. He's that good looking. You know, so for every point of attractiveness under I under Henry Cavill, I am, I kind of have a, a notch of personality that he didn't get. You know what I mean? I feel like that's a good trade-off though. It's a good trade-off. I'll take character any day. That works. It'd be nice to know what it's like to be a 10 though. It would be nice to know what that's like. Like a full 10, like in like undeniably like 10 as you walk down the street. It'd be nice to know what that feels like. It probably feels fantastic. Like, I feel like anyone oh. saying it doesn't feel fantastic is just lying. It's like, oh, no, They're people ugly. look at me too much. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. No, that is a thing. Sorry. I will say that is a thing. And I, I've known like some incredibly beautiful women. Um, and they, uh, you know, you think about uh, for a beautiful woman who just, they make men so self-conscious so that they never actually get to hang out with a, a, a guy who is just relaxed and who can be himself. Cause the guy's always putting it on an airs cause he's around this like incredibly attractive woman. I do feel sorry for very, very, very attractive women. I think it's really, really hard because do they you, never get to. S- is that, is that dependent on the man they're around though? Or do you get to the level where it's just all men? I think they, I think they would love to be in the, in the presence of gay men because gay men aren't, wouldn't be attracted to them so that they can be, so they can feel like a male, a male relationship that is relaxed there. You just can't fathom how uncomfortable men get around very, very attractive women. They stutter on their words, even if they're very confident, they put it on an airs, they act like they're better than they are. And they don't even not realize that they're doing it. And the, and so these women are like, wait, is this what men are like? It's, it's awful. Like it's not, enjoy- <laughs> it's not, enjoy- it makes me feel uncomfortable because if you were hanging out and you're uncomfortable, I'll probably feel a discomfort yeah, yeah. too. So it's like all these women ever get to know is uncomfortable men, self-conscious men. You know, it's t- and I reckon it'd be really hard. Like, as you actually never get a view into <laughs> a nice, relaxed man. I know, like, you're trying to work on my pity for women that are a 10, but I'm just, I'm not. I'm trying. I'm trying. I don't feel it, though, like, anywhere. Like, I, 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 like, I get yeah. that, but okay, may- like, maybe a little, like, 10% pity there. Maybe. I don't know. It's, it's just a stretch. It's, it, 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 you know, you, you can hang out, Michaela, and you're still very attractive, but you can be one of the boys and the boys can relax and it's all good. Like Victoria's Secret models, as in not the new ones, the old ones, they sit down at a, <laughs> at a, at a, at a table full of men. Men cannot handle themselves. They're just like, they can't even look them in the eye. So think about a woman who's a 10, who's, she's like, why can't this guy look me in the eye? Like why kind of there's a table yeah. of guys here. Not one can make eye contact with me. It's because the, the man is like, can, 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 can I get you a drink? You know, sputtering like idiots. Like that's all that they get to know. Okay, I can sorry. understand. You don't no, have to. No, no, I, I don't. Not really. Um, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I can see why one would, but I don't. Does everybody in Hollywood have a nose job? Um. Uh, uh, not nose job, but everybody in Hollywood has work done so that the people that you have in your mind has been the most attractive that you would like to look like have all had ample work done uh, over the years. Have you seen Angelina Jolie recently? It looks exactly the same as she did 20 years ago. She looks great. 
she's incredible. I mean, you know, she's always been number one for yeah, me. I mean, she's yeah, always yeah. been like, oh my God, she's still know, number one. She, like, well, yeah. My wife too is incredibly attractive. So, but I'm talking, yes. Like the, the people we're pinning up on our walls going, I want to look like that. They've all had work done. Not one of them hasn't because they can be so subtle now with all the things that they can do to you, including to the nose that like you, they look exactly like they did 10 years ago, but you know, Slightly so we better. all think, yeah, we all think that they're doing, they're eating things that are really good for them. And so that's why they look that way. No, they're not eating collagen for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They're getting work done ample. So it's not just college, oh, yeah. collagen and olive oil. No collagen, olive oil, and yogurt ain't it. <laughs> but if I was to choose it, if I was to choose a diet just for beauty, it would be collagen, yogurt, and green juice. Green juice? Yeah, like a cold pressed green juice. Uh, without the no kale, no spinach, no collard greens, the low oxalate oh. greens. And 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 but by the way, your skin will still sag because they haven't found that collagen actually links to your skin yet and has any effect aesthetically on your skin. What? I didn't know that. So all that marketing, marketing is a lie. Oh. It's kind of a lie. It's it's probably good for you. It's it's definitely good for you to have more collagen. Collagen goes down as you age, helps with the elastin in your skin. But we there's no there's been no science that proves that it aesthetically helps your skin or your face. It's still great for you, super high in glycine and great for the gut. But um, yeah, no, we don't know that it does anything to the skin, the nails or the hair yet. I actually didn't know that. It's Shockingly sad, isn't it? enough, yeah, that is kind of sad. So you can't you can't drink collagen and have stronger nails. They actually haven't found an association. No, I don't think so. But you know, you you eat a lot of meat, okay? So you've heard of this thing called methionine toxicity. One of the things that helps with methionine toxicity when you eat too much animal foods is glycine, which is in bone broth and super high in bone broth. So if you're eating nose to tail, or if you're eating a whole bunch of meat, it's good to have some a bunch of glycine too. Like bone broth can balance out the methionine. I'm so, do you drink bone broth? Can you drink bone broth? Yeah, but I don't. I really basically just eat like red meat and steak and burgers and... Burgers? Yeah, but just the burger patty. Like patties? Right, yeah. I was going to say. You can't just no, throw no. in a bun. It, it's just like the same but ground version. Yeah, no. So Yum. not burgers. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's some variety brisket yeah. and then ground brisket yeah. or, you know you know how it is but um no i like when i eat soup i was eating i was trying to eat bone broth at the beginning of the diet because i don't know you hear about what you need and everything and it was like well maybe bone broth is healthy and it upset my stomach i've got histamine intolerance mm. like crazy so anything aged oh, and got it bone broth is just it isn't i my stomach can't handle it so i eat soup but it's totally. like meat i just pressure cook meat and then that turns into soup, which is also great. I wonder if you could pressure cook bones. It does take too long though, doesn't it? So the histamines go up over the hours. If they're not aged, probably. I know bones generally mm. aren't as aged, but the last time I pressure cooked bones, my stomach didn't like it. And so, no, I really just eat meat and meat soup and different forms of, of meat. I don't even eat organs. And I've been doing it since 2017. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can't have liver? You can't have- No, I do. Um, I just don't, I don't like it. Do you actually like, no, does anyone gross, like, yeah. it's disgusting. Yeah, no, I'm not eating that. I, I think I've eaten it basically once a year since 2017. Um, and then I don't think I've had it in the last two years. Yeah. And so how do you, do you take a pill form or have you had the chips yet? The carnivore Aurelius chips? Those are also di like disgusting. People advertise those. They're, they're lying. I know. This is but the best just, form they're, they're, of liver. It's not very much better than normal liver, but it's crunchy. Like <laughs> It's crunchy, exactly. It's the texture because the texture of liver is also gross on top of the taste. But I can take the taste. I just can't take the texture. That's why I eat the chips. Ah, no. I don't eat liver. and I don't eat liver chips. Fair enough. And, and I'm not going <laughs> to force you to. Okay. Okay, good. So your podcast, why, why do you have such a focus on health? Like my focus on health is, was brought on because it was like a struggle. I was dying and I, I hated people who focused on health with like a passion, like the gluten-free people. I hated them. The people eating organic, I hated them too. There was no rhyme or reason why I hated the healthy people. It didn't even, I don't even think it was associated. I was just like, it's narcissistic and annoying and it's in your face. And I don't want to hear about your weird hippie stores and all of it's false anyway. And then I ended up on this stupid diet that cured me. And now I'm like, okay, fine. Maybe some people out there had a point about alternative health. 
Um, but why did you get into it? Yeah, I can't say that like I didn't come from it where I was like struggling with my health at all. I actually got into health and wellness because of I was vain and I was like, I want to make sure that yeah. I age as well as I possibly can. And then um, uh, over the years, it's the vanity is fallen away somewhat vanity is still there but um i'm more i'm just and then i became interested and became kind of good at uh, you know when you're when you love when you love what you're listening to you can take in the information very easily and i just loved health and wellness and so um i kind of fa- fell into it thanks to dave asprey i had an ex-girlfriend who used to make um coffee with butter and she'd blend it and i was like what is this why am i drinking butter and she's t- told me about this dave asprey guy and uh, anyway, when she stopped making those for me, I realized that we needed to break up. Uh, and because she just stopped doing it one day, and she and and I was like, oh, so you don't really care anymore. That's how I knew that I needed to leave. But so Dave Asprey was kind of my way in. He was the one talking about how fat isn't bad for you, meat, red meat isn't bad for you. Um, put butter in your coffee; it's really delicious, and it is. You know, not everyone should do it, and it's not something that I do all the time anymore. And then. I, I was like, okay, well, that, this is really fun information and everyone's talking about plant-based and, and I'm like, and I'm over here thinking about how great red meat is for everybody. It's like, okay, well, this, and then I found myself in a community. I loved Dave Asprey. I loved Ben Greenfield. I'm fascinated by them. I love biohacking. I love, you know, getting outside in the nude, getting under red light, getting my balls on red light. Um, Does that, getting, okay, is that a- real? Does that work? My husband's really into <laughs> that. And it, I'm just like, this is so it's so obnoxious. It's right. so obnoxious. Like you did, like last night he's doing it and he like the light shines up and just like wham right in my eyes. And I was just like, Jordan, like you need really, this doesn't, I don't even believe this, but is there really, there've been scientific studies on like red light on your balls, increasing testosterone. That's actually peer yeah, reviewed. I'm not sure about the No, I wouldn't know if it's peer reviewed or anything like that. I, I do know that you can overdo it though. So you what? wouldn't be wanting to do more than you can overdo it. You can, you can burn your swimmers if you leave them under a red light for too long. So I would be staying, I wouldn't be doing it. I used to do it for 20 minutes a day when I, when I first got into it and that was unnecessary. I was like a virile 30 year old. Um, and I need, you know, I was like, you don't really need the help. So I reckon just doing it 10 minutes every so often, you don't have to be a crazy person about it. It, you know, red light is probably great for you. Um, I, I, Again, I don't know what these peer-reviewed things are stay- saying, but uh, you know, on that biohacking thing, I also get into like forty-degree water every morning for three minutes. First oh, thing. Oh, cool! Do you have a yeah? Cold, I love do that. Do you have story. a cold plunge at your place? I got a cold plunge, yeah, which is a pretty terrific thing. I mean, mentally, what a win to get in, get in and out of cold water for three minutes. First thing that you do every day, and you can get out, and wow. it's like coffee before coffee. And the studies on that are like excellent. Like what yeah, they that, found about what yeah. has the effects on the brain. And that's cool. What company do you use? They're the, it's the, it's called the cold plunge and it looks like a white, it's a beautiful white bathtub essentially. Oh, I have a friend um, who has one of those. So you like that company? I love it. Love it. Yeah. I mean, there's the, there's the other companies that like where you're basically sitting on ice and now go slightly below 40. This one goes to 40. You don't need to really go below 40. It's as cold as you can believe. And um, I, I love it. And it looks, and that's just a good looking bathtub, but, um, and I do it every day. Uh, it's something that you can consistently do one, and you can teach yourself to even get better at. I'm not interested in getting better yeah. at it. I'm just interested in getting the benefits brain wise. And um, I love it. Mm, okay. I want to do that. That one, it doesn't, you don't have actual ice chunks in there then, do you? It's just no, cold, cold, no, cold. No, it's just okay. pure but the cold benefits, water, yeah. Benefits are the same? Benefits are the same. I mean, I can't imagine that there'd be any benefits to like there being a whole bunch of ice in there. Um, Looks better for I, social media content. It does look better for social media. That, you know, you getting in and shivering and that, that'll that be enough and saying that it's, you know, and that you have a thing there that says it's 40 degrees and so everyone can know that you're actually getting into 40 degree thing. It's, it's, it's sensational and so good for you. And what they just, what they're saying about like norepinephrine and epinephrine in the brain, like th- can go up by 300% in some cases just by doing it about 14 minutes a week. So that's not a lot and pretty terrific for the brain. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to do that. I got a sauna. I've wanted a sauna. I've wanted yeah. a sauna for years. Yeah. And I have one now. And it's amazing. But what did you get? The infrared or did you get the, I have an infrared. 
Are you finding it's helping with your condition? Is it helping with inf inflammation? I don't really have very many symptoms anymore, but mm. it helps if I get worked up about something. Like if I'm stressed out, it helps. And if I accidentally eat something that gives me a reaction, it helps. It makes yeah, me feel wow. good. Like it makes me feel good. I really like infrared saunas and I liked it better than the, than the, I guess the ones that aren't infrared that just heat you up. Uh, cause I can stay in there for a lot longer and just sweat. Whereas the other ones I'd heat up and I'd get hot and it's, I'm already in Florida. It's like, eh. I'd rather like get in somewhere and, and really sweat than heat up as much. So I have a sauna and it doesn't even have heaters at the front. They're ones that have heat. Yeah. Infrared. And then they'll have heaters at the front. And I got the type that doesn't even have heaters at the front. So it's just uh. sweating. You, I don't get too hot. It's nice. It's lovely. I think sauna is the next frontier for me. Like that'll be the next thing that I get into. I, I am, I have an issue with heat. I, if I'm over, if I overheat, I get angry. If you want yeah. to piss me off, give me a cup of coffee, put me in jeans and send me out in the middle of the day. And that'll do it. I'll be an absolute like irritated, like angry man. And so maybe learning resilience to build heat resilience would be good for me. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, the type, the type I have doesn't have heaters in it. I don't like the ones that have heaters because getting hot like that makes me uncomfortable and like right. irrita irritated. Yeah. Although I've gotten a lot much better since I've been on the carnivore diet, I used to be hot all the time and I was on a lot of medication too. So it was probably side effects, mm. but I, I was like in tank tops and shorts in the winter, hot all the time. And I'm not, Oh, and now I'm cold instead. It's better though. <laughs> Like really cold actually, but it's better. Yeah. I mean, I'm cold all the time now. I, my body, I don't know what it is, but ever since doing the cold plunge, I'm the one who turns off the air conditioner now. And my wife oh. is the one switching it back on. And it, I, I, I'm wearing a sweater in the morning of us in summer, like walking around my house. And I used to look at people doing that and go, what are you doing? How it's summer. How are you doing that? That's me now. It's very interesting. And it has to be the cold or, or and it, it, it could be placebo. I don't know, but I feel generally colder all the time now. Mm, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. So that doesn't sound as good for me, but that could be good for, that could be good for my husband. Well, you should be going, you can do the going between thing where you go into the sauna, jump into the cold plunge back into the sauna. And that's been meant to be fantastic for you. And Dr. Peter Adia has talked about how much his deep sleep is improved by doing that at night before bed. His deep sleep's improved by like an hour. Really? By an hour? Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that is an insane number for anybody listening. Like you usually just stick to about two hours for a lot of people. They just stick to a certain number to refer to increase an hour is that's a big difference. I was drinking um, electrolytes for quite a while, like the flavored electrolytes. Uh, and mm -hmm. they've got a, they've got a good dose of citric acid in them. And it took me about a year to figure out I was reacting to the citric acid, my deep sleep. I was getting six to 15 minutes of deep sleep a night for a year and a half. Yeah. Oof. And it, and it was when uh, my dad was really ill too. And so they overlapped. So I was unbelievably stress intolerant because I wasn't getting any deep sleep. And I was looking at it, it was my aura ring was just like driving me crazy. It was like six minutes. I was like exhausted all the time. I wasn't sleeping. And it turned out it was the citric acid and the electrolytes. So I cut that mm. out. And then my deep sleep in like in the next two weeks went back to an hour, which still isn't, it's not great. Maybe I'll try that. Well, out. but I imagine, well, and then also your aura ring can be wrong, but, uh, you know, the other thing that you should, uh, you, you're, you're, so you're a carnivore, which means very low carbohydrate, which means you need more salt. So how much, how much salt are you and how much electrolytes are you drinking every day? Um, I eat a lot of salt, like, uh, a lot, a lot okay. of salt. And I used to add more electrolytes to water, the unflavored type. So it's just like sodium, potassium, a little bit of magnesium, uh, mm -hmm. and, I don't add too much, maybe one a day. So that's an extra gram of salt a day. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's about it. But I eat a lot of salt You're, with my meat. Good. And then your electrolytes, uh, your, you have a new electrolyte company and it has, I it's do. salty one, right? That's the one oh, yeah, I like, super, the salty ones. Super salty. It's going to have a, a gram of sodium and 300 milligrams of potassium and some magnesium. It's pretty much like you can just make it. I used to mix my own but they're mm. very salty. And where did the salt come from? If you don't mind me asking. Oh my gosh. Well, it's not like Redmond real salt. Well, I still well, use it. It's, it's sodium it? chloride. I don't know. 
As soon as this episode finished, I had to find out where the salt from my electrolytes is sourced from because I've literally spent two years trying to make these the cleanest electrolytes out there. The salt is mined in Canada. No flow agents are used. It's non-irradiated and totally free of anything other than salt from a mine. So we're good. Thought I'd pop in and explain that real quick. Enjoy the rest of this episode. I don't know why people don't appreciate the, the like the sweet slash salty thing. I fucking love it. Oh my gosh. I tried to give it to some of the people who work for me because it turns out because I've been on the carnivore diet for so long, when I was testing out the cherry flavor, I have a cherry flavor mm. that's going to be coming out and a salted caramel, which is going to be good in tea. Um, but anyway, I, I was testing them out and I was like, this, these are repulsively sweet. Like this, like this yeah. is so sweet. Like this is way too sweet for me. And, and I, I gave one to a babysitter. I was like, what, what do you think about this? She goes, kind of, you know, it's kind of like tonic water. And I was like, oh no, tonic water. Doesn't it taste like cherry? This was the last iteration. So we switched things up. Um, but it turns out my taste buds are so sensitive to sweet that I was like undervaluing how sweet it, it was, or I was overvaluing it. So normal right. people, and then the, the eat, yeah, eat, eat carbs. It wasn't sweet to them at all. I was like, uh oh. Got it. What about the this? How is it sweet? Is it is it sweetened? Stevia. Is there stevia in it or something? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I like I like stevia. And then um the I reckon the the salted one, the salted caramel one, that'd be great in coffee mm -hmm. because you don't you know like Dave Asprey's just come out with Danger Coffee, which is coffee slash minerals. Like in in the beans, there's minerals oh, in the beans. Oh, that's cool. And. And so if you were to like, you know, because I put salt in my coffee every morning too, salt and cinnamon, um, because, you know, so coffee obviously saps electrolytes and saps salt from your body. And it makes sense. Like you could put it in a, a salted a caramel coffee. coffee. That's delicious. I know. It sounds good. Okay. I'll send it to you. You can tell me what you think. I don't drink you coffee. You drink coffee? So. No, oh, I don't drink oh anything. I'm probably not even going to use the flavored electrolytes. Like they don't have any citric oh, wow. acid in them. So for people who get stimulated from citric acid... They won't have that issue, but um, mm. I am still so crazily sensitive to everything that I don't think I can like. I don't think I'll be doing that daily anyway. It'll it'll overstimulate me. I can't even take zinc. I can't take zinc because of. Oh. I don't know why I would take zinc because I only eat meat. I don't really need to take zinc, but I got mm, I kept getting true. sick. Scarlet kept bringing home horrifying child sicknesses, and I was just getting child sickness after child sickness, and I was like, maybe I need some zinc and things, and then I couldn't sleep from the zinc. And I was like, okay, I guess, I don't know. What about vitamin C needs as a carnivore? How do you get that? Can you can you take vitamin C or no? Um, So I don't, uh, I don't take any vitamin, and I had a bunch of vitamin deficiencies before the carnivore diet. Uh, all my v B vitamins were low, vitamin D was low. Um, I have to get that rechecked. I'm in Florida now, so I'm hoping that's been bumped up. But everything, zinc was also low. Everything fixed itself. And vitamin mm -hmm. C's been been normal for me. I don't supplement. But when COVID was going around a bunch near the beginning, I was taking a little bit of vitamin C in a like powder form every day. Mm. It also tastes really good if all you eat is meat. It's got this like sour tart taste that's like it's almost sweet. And so it's yeah. like, ah oh, yeah, some vitamin C in my sparkling water. Sweet. <laughs> It's a minimalist you're, life, you sound, Luke. Yeah, easily pleased like by vitamin C, which is like, yeah, you I, mean, see I my, do not enjoy the taste. Oh, it's that. so funny. My my dad at restaurants, he's on the same diet and it's like the same thing. He's got allergies to everything as well. And he'll be like, yeah, I'll get some. Can I have a sparkling water in a hot water? Just get the like the two different waters going on. Wow. So you, you get That's so creative. Cute. You get creative with variety. <laughs> I mean, I imagine that you're into your salts too. Like it's not just one type. Oh, I've got to send you oh, some yeah. Kalima salt. What is that? It's, 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 it's this new salt from Mexico. It's flakier than Malden. No. It's so, it's so flaky and so crunchy. It's amazing. <laughs> and, Car and Akara, we were obsessed with Malden before and we yeah. put it on everything. And now we're putting this Kalima stuff. It's like getting like every so often, there'll just be like a squarish flake. Like a square, like a like a like a three D square flake. Yeah, it's sensation. Oh my god, <laughs> it it does Malden for flakiness every day of the week. It's crazy. I have to send you some. Okay, I'm into that. I I usually use Malden. Oh, it's have good. they sponsored you yet? What? No. Do they do sponsorships? Uh, no, but they, they should. should. They should sponsor you. I tried to get air fryers to sponsor me. I was like, do you know, understand? And they were like, you're doing free marketing anyway. We don't need to pay you. No. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're the idiots talking about these companies without even being paid by them. We're the fools. Yeah, no, it, it's so true. 
Okay, Luke, for people online who don't follow you, where should they go? I'm on Instagram and TikTok. My handle is at the Luke Cook. And uh, I have a podcast called The Zaddy Zone. It's wherever you get your podcasts. Why did you choose the name The Zaddy Zone? Well, because people named me Zaddy after I was, um, I played Lucifer in The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and I played, I was Sabrina's dad. And um, people started calling me Daddy. And then Zaddy was the new pop term and people started calling me Zaddy. And I just really liked it. I thought it was funny. And, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that people didn't think it was a, just another podcast. It was like going to be fun. So I called it the Zaddy Zone. I, 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 I may change it. It's been a lot of explaining to people who are like, just look at me with these <laughs> eyes and like, what? It's like, okay, just it's called the Zaddy Zone. That's all I'm saying. Bye bye. Oh, that's funny. No, don't change it. I like it. It's got a good ring to okay. it. Okay, Luke. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on. It was nice meeting you finally. You're this was fun. a joy.